Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, virtual college exploration. Um, we're very excited about this opportunity to be with you again tonight to share uh, another college presentation with you. We are here from CACRO as the organization to support all North and South Carolina students. So let's go over a few housekeeping items just to make sure you're comfortable with the presentation tonight. Um, how do you ask questions? You will see on your panel um, a question and answer button in order to type in your question to the presenters at any time through the presentation. Uh, the college tonight has several people on board that will be monitoring that question and answer panel. So feel welcome to ask questions as we go through. Um, your camera and your microphone attendees are off. Um, that is certainly to help not distract our presenters tonight. So they cannot see you or be able to hear you. So make sure you're asking the questions in the question and answer panel. Um, be welcome to sign up for more sessions. We are running these through October 9th. So go out to the CACRO schedule on our website at CACRAO.org and sign up for as many sessions as you like. Um, recording tonight will be available at a later time. We will post the recording on CACRO's website. So for tonight, if you wish to go back to uh, take a look at the presentation again, or look at any of the presentations, you're welcome to do that. So thank you for joining us, and I'm going to turn the presentation over at this time to Edgecombe Community College. Thank you all for joining us. So hi, my name is Tessa Weisenborn. I'm a student success coach here at Edgecombe Community College. I'll be moderating this evening and just welcome again to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair. Um, if, again, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Our Dean of Students, Samantha Phillips, is going to be helping to answer those. And we'll also plan to leave time at the end um, of our presentation for questions and answers. Um, and now to kick us off for all of our students and parents and families, we'll have Dr. Gregory McLeod. Welcome everyone. Thank you for spending your time with us. We appreciate your interest and hope you'll find the information provided to be beneficial to you. Uh, as Tessa mentioned, my name is Greg McLeod and as college president, I'm honored, uh, absolutely honored to work with some amazing people and serve wonderful students here at this awesome place, Edgecombe Community College, home of the Eagles. We're located a little over an hour's drive east of Raleigh, North Carolina, and about 30 minutes north of Greenville. We are a small college, but we have a big heart and we truly care about our students and their success as seen in the quality of our programs, our services, and our overall care. While many students, which many students have expressed to me as to why they chose to attend ECC. Uh, so following me, you will meet Mr. Abdur Gant, who will share his perspectives as a student, followed by several key people here at the college who will introduce themselves and tell you about some of the academic programs and support services we have to offer. So best wishes to all of you as you prepare for this next step, and I hope to see you in the future as a proud ECC Eagle. Thank you. Hi, my name is Abdur Gant, and I am a super senior at the ESCOM Early College High School. And I am currently working towards my diploma in Associates in Science at or with ECC. And I'll, after I graduate here, I like to go to ANT to take up engineering. So far at ECC, I've been able to be exposed to a couple of oppor opportunities like building and wiring, things that's kind of like up my alley of what I want to do engineering. And also I've taken solar classes and that has led me to get my OSHA 10 certificate. And just having the opportunity to get my OSHA 10 even led me to go further to obtain my OSHA 30 certificate. I also had a summer job and uh, we did a lot of building boxes and pilots and such. And I took a 
carpentry class with ECC and that class actually very much prepared me for that job as I already knew how to use the majority of the tools and the safety measures on how to use them. Um, the my currently wiring job, my current wiring job, oh, my, some, my apologies, my current wiring class has uh, provided me the opportunity to have a potential wiring job after I graduate. As uh, the professor knows, a guy who wants to take in students who's not really knowledgeable in the field, so he can teach them and have them work full time with them. And my biggest thing so far is definitely the solar and OSHA because I would have never thought to even look at OSHA if it wasn't for the class being offered at ECC. So I would like to thank you for joining us and I hope to see you all, all at ECC soon. Thanks, Abdur, and great job. Um, we're now gonna have some faculty and staff present about programs available for you at Edgecombe Community College. And so we'll start with Bruce Panatin, who is our Dean of Health Sciences to tell you some, um, some more about our health science programs. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Bruce Panathan, as, as Tessa said. I'm the Dean of Health Sciences and Public Safety here at Edgecombe Community College. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a number of the healthcare careers um, and programs that we offer here at the college. Next slide, please. So the first question we ask is why a healthcare or why a career in healthcare? Um, and employment in healthcare occupations is projected to grow by 15% from 2019 to 2029, which is much faster than the average for all occupations. It's estimated that we're going to see about 2.4 million new jobs in healthcare in that time frame. Healthcare occupations are projected to add more jobs than any other occupational groups. This projected growth is mainly due to an aging population, leading to a greater demand for these healthcare services. The median annual wage for healthcare practitioner, practitioners and technical occupations, like a registered nurse, was $68,000 in May of 2019. That is significantly higher than the median annual wage for all other occupations in the economy at the same time, which was $39,000. Some people may shy away from healthcare careers due to the fear of blood or other things like that, but did you know that there are great careers in healthcare where you'd never have to touch a patient? If you have a desire to help, but are unsure uh, which healthcare career might be right for you, reach out to us and we're here to help you. Next slide. So why choose Edgecombe Community College? Many of you are probably watching a bunch of different videos today or through the course of this process. Why choose us? Our faculty and staff have countless years of experience helping students reach their career and academic goals. We're committed to helping our students grow into healthcare professionals. We have a state-of-the-art 45,000 square foot biotechnology and medical simulation center that's on our Rocky Mount campus. This building, which is known as the Lamb Building, has a simulated hospital that is spread over two floors. It has an emergency room, an intensive care unit, nurses stations, radiography suites, a surgical suite, and even an ambulance setting inside the building. If you haven't seen it, you really need to come by and see it. Tuition at Edgecombe Community College remains affordable year after year. Uh, Full-time in-state tuition um, and fees is $1,000 per semester. If you compare that with some of the universities out there, like UNC Central is about $3,200 per semester. East Carolina is about $3,600 per semester. And UNC Chapel Hill is about $4,500 per semester. And we have financial aid available through a combination of grants, scholarships, loans, and work study available for many of our students. On the con ed side, where we have some other um, health career occupation programs and training, like EMT and paramedic, the tuition can be no charge to students if they are sponsored by a registered EMS agency. And some of our other con ed health occupations classes, like nurse aid, um, phlebotomy, the um, medication aid, these particular classes may qualify for financial assistance for those students as well. If you're interested in a healthcare career, look no further than Edgecombe Community College. Next slide, please. 
So let's talk a little bit about many of the programs that we offer here. You'll notice on the slide that we have two images there. One is for our curriculum programs and one is for some of our con ed programs. And we'll talk about our curriculum programs and those particular careers first. First, health information technology. Are you looking for an exciting career in healthcare but without direct patient care? The health information technology curriculum is designed to provide individuals with the technical knowledge, the skills, to process, analyze, maintain, and report health information data in compliance with legal accreditation and licensure and certification standards. Medical assisting. A medical assistant is responsible for a broad range of clinical laboratory and administrative work. With greater focus on the clinical aspect, they work directly with physicians and patients to support tasks at the doctor's office, medical clinics, hospitals, and other facilities. Medical office administration is more on the clerical side. These employees work with physicians or in physicians offices of different specialties. They process medical insurance claims, handle physician referrals, perform administrative tasks of the front desk, schedule appointments, verify documents, and perform bookkeeping as needed. What about nursing? Everybody knows a nurse. When we think about what nurses do, nurses help to change lives. Nurses bring knowledge, resourcefulness, and deep patient experience to their work every day, improving the well being of those in their care. Ophthalmic medical personnel. Ophthalmic medical personnel help assist optometrists or ophthalmo ophthalmologists in part of their job duties. They administer eye medication in accordance with their protocols or direct orders from the doctor. And ophthalmic medical assistants may even help ophthalmologists during eye surgeries and procedures. If you've ever, ever had an x-ray before, you've worked with a radiographer. Radiography is the art and science of using the least amount of radiation to provide the best quality images of tissues, organs, bones, and vessels that comprise the human body, working with radiologists and physicians who interpret these images for diagnosis and treatment while ensuring excellent patient care. With this particular program, once you've completed the associate's degree, you have the option of actually uh, attending advanced image modality training like computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, or even mammography if you choose to expand your credentials. Respiratory therapy. Respiratory therapists are certified medical professionals who treat problems with your lungs or breathing. They work closely with doctors to diagnose and monitor cardiopulmonary conditions or breathing problems. They may work in emergency rooms, intensive care units, outpatient clinics, nursing homes, or sleep centers. Some specialize in working with infants and babies or others with seniors. What about surgical technology? Life in the operating room of the OR can be hectic and demanding with life-threatening emergencies often occurring despite hours of careful planning and preparation. As a key member of the team, the surgical technologist must anticipate the needs of the patient and the surgeon to ensure that each operation goes as smoothly as possible. If you're looking for an exciting and rewarding way to work on a team in the healthcare field, this could be the career you've been seeking. Now let's talk about our continuing education programs. EMT and paramedic. Emergency medical technicians, or EMTs, and paramedics respond to emergency calls, perform life-saving medical services, and transport patients to medical facilities. Nurse aides, otherwise known as nursing assistants, work as part of a healthcare team under the supervision of nurses. Nursing assistants provide basic care and help with the activities of daily living. Nurse aid is a short-term training program intended to get healthcare professionals into the workforce quickly. But many nurse aides further their careers in various healthcare professions like nursing or some of our other uh, curriculum programs that we just mentioned. Phlebotomy. A phlebotomist is someone who draws blood from a patient. They may do that for a variety of procedures, including tests, transfusions, research, medical procedures, or even donations. Phlebotomists might work with patients, doctors, nurses, scientists, or even lab technicians. Many healthcare professionals earn their phlebotomy credentials to enhance their employment marketability and increase their ability to help patients. Another is medication aid. This is a stackable credential uh, that some healthcare providers earn to expand their job prospects. Medication aids assist nurses in providing care and medications. They follow written and or oral instructions to administer those medications and document the dosages at times. 
They also help to monitor patients and report changes in conditions or vital signs. Next slide. If you're interested in learning more about the uh, health career opportunities that we have and programs that we have at the college, please visit our website and check out our Pathways to Healthcare Careers, which is a really, really nice brochure that goes into the more of the details of things that we weren't able to cover in this presentation. You can also visit our website under edgecomb.edu slash programs health sciences and see the listing of all of those programs that we discussed as well as the classes required in those programs or you can give us a call at 252-618-6526, and we'll be looking forward to your call and helping you as best we can. And now I'll turn this over to Dr. Jonica Ellis Kaiser, our Business Administration and Accounting Program Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Panagin. Hello, I'm Jonica Ellis Kaiser, Chair of Business and Accounting here at ECC. Are you interested in a career in agriculture? maybe working in a business such as equipment, feed, and agriculture supply sales. Or maybe you want to manage your own farm, nursery, or greenhouse. Do you like cute little animals like chickens and pigs and cattle? Maybe you want to teach ag, or the technology side of ag like drones and biotech may interest you. If so, a degree in agribusiness technology is for you. Students will learn the fundamentals of agriculture, crop production, ag business management, livestock production, greenhouse management, and many other skills to have a successful career in agriculture. ECC offers an agribusiness technology degree, diploma, and certificate. We also offer certificates in animal science and horticulture. Has the whole toilet paper saga during the pandemic interest you? Then you may want a career in logistics or supply chain management. There are a multitude of career opportunities in distribution, transportation, warehousing, trucking operations, logistics, and manufacturing organizations. Students will learn about international and domestic movement of goods from the raw material source through production and ultimately to the customer. So that's finding those supplies to make the toilet paper, warehousing it, we sure hadn't stored much of, to we hadn't stored much toilet paper here lately, getting it to our distributors, and then finally delivering it to the retail businesses where we can buy. Doesn't that sound like something you would want to be a part of? ECC offers supply chain management degrees, diplomas, and certificates in distribution management and truck and operations management. How about an exciting career in welding? Graduates of ECC's welding technology curriculum may be employed as entry-level technicians in welding and metalworking industries. Career opportunities also exist in construction, manufacturing, fabrication, sales, quality control, supervision, and welding-related self-employment. Instruction includes consumable and non-consumable electrode welding and cutting processes that provide the students with industry standard skills developed through classroom training and practical application. We have recently updated our welding lab with air conditioning. You won't find that anywhere else. ECC offers a welding degree, diploma, and certificate. Please see our Business, Industry, and Technologies page on the ECC website or contact me at the email listed if interested. Next up is Dean Wood with College Transfer. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Wood. I'm Dean of Arts and Sciences here at Edgecombe Community College and Director of College Transfer. We appreciate you taking the time to hear about our programs today. You've heard a lot about some of our two-year programs, but I know some of you out there might be interested in a baccalaureate or four-year degree. And if that's your interest, Edgecombe is a great place to start. In our College Transfer program here at Edgecombe, you can earn an Associate in Arts or an Associate in Science degree. And when you do that, you'll take the very same courses that you would take in the first two years at a four-year college or university. 
When you complete either one of those degrees, you can then transfer to any UNC system college seen here. And most of the private colleges in North Carolina and throughout the state, other states, as a junior without any loss of credit. Not only will you be admitted to these colleges as a junior, you're also guaranteed to be admitted into one of the UNC system universities. So if you have concerns about whether I'll be able to get into a university, know that when you finish an AA or an AS degree successfully at a community college here at Edgecombe, you will be admitted to at least one of the UNC system universities. We also at Edgecombe have some special co-admission partnerships with some universities, including East Carolina University, Elizabeth City State University, and UNC Wilmington. In these programs, you are granted admission not only to Edgecombe Community College when you start out here, but you're also granted admission then at the uni university while you're still at Edgecombe. That means you not only have an Edgecombe advisor who's helping you to make the best successful choices to get you to where you want to go, but also you have an advisor contact at the university, even during those first two years here at Edgecombe, who can help you work towards your goals for all four years. Another great perk of that is that you can participate in most university activities and events, even while you're still here at Edgecombe. As Dr. McLeod mentioned, we're only a few miles down the road from Greenville and East Carolina University, so that would give you the opportunity to participate in some university activities even during your first two years. Starting at a community college is a popular option. As you can see from this slide, almost half of those in the United States who earn a bachelor's degree start out with a community college experience. Starting at Edgecombe Community College means you get to stay close to your home and you have a low cost way to complete those first two years. You have open door options, everyone is admitted. Not only is tuition far less at a university as Dean Paniton mentioned to you, but you can live at home with no expensive rent to pay and receive high quality instruction in small classes with instructors who are student focused and who know all of their students individually. While a freshman class at a university might have as many as 200 students, ECC classes generally range from 10 to 25 students per class, which means that your instructors can know you and know about you. Course offerings are flexible. Even now we have in-person options on both the Tarboro and Rocky Mount campuses and we have totally online options for those who prefer that method. We provide in-person tutoring if you need to come in and get help from someone face-to-face -face in both Tarver and Rocky Mount, and we have virtual tutoring online if that is the, the need that you have. And that's for all of our classes. We also have student success centers on both campuses. If you just have a question, you don't know who to go to with that question. The Student Success Centers have people in place who are ready to help you with any kind of question and way to help you be successful in your college career. So now that you've heard about our programs, I'm going to send you to Student Services where they will tell you about how to become a student at Edgecombe and how to finance it through the great financial aid opportunities available. Good evening, scholars. I'm Miosha Bellamy. I am an administrative assistant here in Student Services. Now that you've heard about some of the awesome programs that we offer here at Edgecombe Community College, how do you become a student? I'm here to walk you through those steps. Our application is housed online at edgecombe.edu. Once, you're, once you've reached our homepage, you can click on Become a Student, and it will list all the steps towards admissions. Step one, application for admissions. All students must complete the North Carolina residency determination. Residency determines whether you will be charged in-state or out-of-state tuition. Upon completion of the residency, the residency form, you will receive an RCN number. That RCN number will then be placed on your ECC application for admissions. If you do not have access to internet or computer, we do have a student success lab located on both campuses where you may visit to complete both of these forms. 
Step two, apply for financial aid. And step three, provide us with transcripts. We do require that all students provide us with a sealed official copy of your high school, GED, or adult high school transcript. If you are a high school student that has taken some curriculum courses to receive college credit, please provide us with that official transcript as well. Step four, new student orientation. New student orientation is an online session that provides new students with an overview of how college will be. Step five, register for classes and get admissions help. We have embedded a virtual sign-in form for your convenience to fill out to say, hey, I've completed steps one through four, I'm ready to register. Or if you simply just didn't understand something in steps one through four, you can fill that out and someone from our student services team will reach out to you to get you that assistance. Step six, your counselor interview. This interview, a counselor will speak to you over the phone or you can make an appointment to speak with a counselor and they will set you up with your first semester of classes. I have enjoyed speaking with you guys tonight and I hope you choose to be an Eagle. Next, you will hear from our financial aid director to tell you all about applying for financial aid. Well, good after, good evening. Um, my name is Sherlock McDougall, and as Ms. Bellamy said, I serve as the financial aid director here at Edgecombe Community College. And I'm super excited that you guys have joined us today. And I'm trying to adjust my camera so that uh, we can get, I can get the glare off me. I'm so sorry. Um, so again, um, uh, we are so happy to have you here um, joining us today. Uh, the topics that we would uh, discuss today are the financial aid cycle, avoiding the financial aid pitfalls, and the sources of financial aid. All right, the financial aid cycle. Um, I know sometimes the financial aid cycle can be somewhat difficult to navigate. So hopefully uh, we can care, um, the steps will uh, assist you with uh, making that, that process um, a lot smoother. And the Department of Education has provided a one-stop shop um, for students and parents, uh, which is the um, visiting w, the website listed there, um, studentaid.gov. Um, and as Miosha, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Bellamy just indicated, you can also um, click on become a student in option two in the, um, on the Edgecombe Community College's website. The, so the financial aid cycle, um, the first step is be, um, get prepared. Um, in order to get prepared, you should gather all your documents such as your parents' tax information, social security numbers, and, um, and all of other documentations that you may need. Um, and the next step, uh, it would be create a financial aid or federal student aid username and password. Now keep in mind, if you are a dependent student, you, um, you and your parents are required to have a, a username and password in order to complete and sign your FAFSA. Once you have established your, um, your, the username and password, the next step will be to complete your FAFSA. Uh, keep in mind, the financial aid application is available in less than two days, October 1st. So uh, let's get ready to um, complete the FAFSA. Once you have completed the FAFSA, the next step will be to review your student A report form. Um, once you have reviewed your, um, the, uh, the application, make sure that if any corrections are needed, um, uh, make those corrections um, and submit, uh, resubmit your FAFSA. Once the um, corrections in your FAFSA has been submitted, stay in contact with your financial aid office um, so that you can discuss up financial aid options. Um, once the financial aid option, you complete your FAFSA, you the financial aid office that you, or the school that you have selected will generally receive your application within two to three business days. Um, once, they, once the financial aid office reviews your application, um, they will send you a, uh, an offer letter. So please make sure that you review, receive, and accept your aid. But and keep in mind, uh, the financial aid um, application is required every year. So just keep in mind, you have to repeat this cycle next year. So make sure that you're renewing your FAFSA. Next slide, please. Um, avoiding the pitfalls, as I mentioned, some of them, uh, some of uh, these things I mentioned earlier, um, the main thing is to one, uh, make sure that you're applying early. 
Um, as I stated, the, the financial aid application is available October 1st. Make sure that you're using the correct tax, in, uh, tax information. To complete your 2021-22 FAFSA, you will need to use your uh, parents, you and your parents' 2019 tax information. And we also strongly recommend that you use the data retrieval tool that's embedded in the FAFSA. And as I stated uh, uh, before, I can't stress enough, make sure you stay in contact with your financial aid office. And also at some, at some time, uh, some point, the financial aid office may require additional documentation. So if the financial aid office requests information, please uh, submit that information um, early or ASAP. Okay, now here's the types of aid uh, that once you complete the, uh, completing the FAFSA, you're essentially applying for uh, the various types of aid, aid that is listed here, which are the federal grant, state grant, scholarships, and also the uh, federal student um, model program. Now the, PA, the federal Pell Grant, um, the maximum you can receive in the Pell Grant um, the, uh, for the 2021 academic year is 6345, that's $6,345. And that's, that is based on full-time enrollment, which is typically 12 credit hours. Um, you're also applying for the federal SEOG, Supplemental Opportunity Grant, um, here at um, Edgecombe Community College. You must be Pell eligible and the average award is $200. No, I'm sorry, $200 per semester for a total of $400. State grants, uh, the state of North Carolina offers two types of grants at the community colleges, um, in which is the North Carolina Community College Grant and the North Carolina Education Lottery Scholarship. Scholarships. The, um, our flagship um, scholarship here at Edgecombe Community College is the EDGE Scholarship. You must be a 2021 high school graduate from Nash or um, Edgecombe County. And this scholarship covers tuition, full tuition fees, and your books for two years. Our foundation office um, is so gracious um, in uh, assisting students with scholarship opportunities. Um, they actually provide over $75,000 a year to um, assist students with, um, with offsetting the cost of attendance. And for, for you students that, uh, that are accustomed to working or would like to work, we offer federal work study, uh, which provides part-time employment while you're enrolled um, in uh, EDGECOM. And it is available to um, all undergraduate students, uh, whether you're full or part-time. And also, the last um, um, type of aid listed here is the federal student loans. Now, in the event that the, the aforementioned um, types of aid does not cover your tuition and fees, the federal um, direct loan program is uh, available to you. The direct subsidized loan is a non-interest um, um, bearing loan, whereas the direct unsubsidized loan um, is. And it's, also, it's not based on your financial needs. Next slide, please. And what we've provided here is um, various screenshots um, so that you can become familiar. Um, you have the student aid, um, the student aid, uh, as well as uh, the uh, screenshot of creating your FSA ID. Next slide. Um, and the, uh, the two, um, that, uh, screenshots that you have here um, is the actual FAFSA page where you would just simply click uh, notice if you're a returning student or you're com uh, completing the FAFSA for the first time. And also a snapshot of what the, R the RS data retrieval uh, view um, looks like. Okay. And once you complete your FAFSA, you will get your confirmation page, which is um, shown here. All right, now we'll punt it back to Tessa. Let's go Eagles. All right, thanks, Director McDougall. Um, I'm gonna wait just a few minutes here. Um, I think we have some time left for questions. I don't see any in our um, box now, but I'll give you guys some time if you wanna submit a question. But we thank you again for joining us. Um, and remember to visit us at www.edgecomb.edu. Here at ECC, our goal is for our students to start, stay, and finish their degree. 
um, and we'll be here for you online and in person. Thank you, Tessa and the Edgecombe Community College team. We really appreciate it. Um, certainly, there still is the option for your attendees to um, ask any questions in the chat box. And I haven't seen any pop up. So we may go ahead and just share um, the final screen for tonight. And if that's okay. And let's see, I'll bring that up. Okay, so thank you everyone for um, being on the call with us tonight. Um, when you close out attendees, you will get a quick survey. Uh, when you close the window, it's just a four question survey that will pop up and we hope that you'll answer that to give us good feedback on tonight's presentation and how you like the virtual college ex exploration world and continue to go back to CACRO and sign up for more sessions as you see them. So I want to thank all the presenters tonight, um, Edgecombe Community College, that was wonderful. And I really appreciate you being with us. And if you, um, of course, wish to present more down the road, just keep CACRO informed. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good night.